Sup, Chooms? How y'all living? Hope everything is Nova and you're all having a preem week. Speaking of which, did my fellow friends from the USA have a good week last week? I know I sure as hell did. And no, that isn't just because of my political biases. I just love politics in general because nothing is as entertaining to me as watching a bunch of old people fight with each other. Will you who shut is up, your, man? Listen, who is However, since current events have kept my mind slightly preoccupied as of late, it has come at the expense of my productivity here on this channel, at least a little bit. But I don't want to give the impression that our work here is done. Far from it, Chooms. In fact, due to a certain demographic, specifically Generation Z, being instrumental in creating an unexpected political outcome in my home country, it has inspired me to focus on the question as to what is the lowest possible age someone can safely start using finasteride. Can you use it during puberty without adversely affecting your development? This is a pretty common question because there is a lot of fear mongering online about how old you need to be in order to start using finasteride. It turns out that this is a question that also has a pretty surprising answer. So let's get to it and find out how young someone can be and still use finasteride without any issues. So Let's first address what people are most worried about when it comes to finasteride use in minors. What people are worried about is whether lowering DHT with a 5-AR inhibitor before they have finished growing will stunt their development in some capacity. I get teenagers under 18 who come to my channel and they'll tell me all the time, but Kevin, if I start finasteride when I am too young, it will stunt my growth or will prevent my muscles from developing, it will ruin my beard, and worse than that, my penis won't grow and I'll grow up to look like the quartering and graduate college still a virgin. Isn't DHT important in adolescence, even if it is a trash hormone in adults? Well, I don't mean to make fun of those concerns because they are legitimate concerns, Jooms. And if I were a, still a teenager and I knew about finasteride, these are questions I probably would have had as well. No one wants to stunt their development because of a drug, even when we are talking about something as serious as hair loss. At the same time, though, androgenic alopecia unfortunately often starts during adolescence, and we know that the earlier you start treatment, the better it works. And I'll link a video below where I talk about that. So let's say you're still a kid and you're worried about hair loss. Okay, so when is it safe for you to use finasteride? Well, Let's take a trip back in time before you youngins were even born to the year of 1997, back when I was ditching my junior year of high school to play Final Fantasy VII on the PlayStation 1. This was the year when the FDA first approved finasteride at 1 milligram per day, also known as Propecia, for treating hair loss in men. Yeah, I bet a lot of you kids didn't even know the internet existed back then, did ya? Anyways, on the FDA approval letter, it states that the drug is to be used for male pattern hair loss in men only, and men only is capitalized. If we did deeper into the application, there is a page of the application titled Pediatric Page, and on the page, the people at Merck checked off the item, quote, Pediatric studies are not needed. The drug biologic product has little potential for use in children, unquote. On the flip side of the page, someone hand wrote that the indication is for the treatment of male pattern baldness in men aged 18 to 40 years old. So Merck apparently didn't think the drug was needed in males less than 18 years old and didn't even test the drug in men under the age of 18. In fact, if you look at the package insert for finasteride, you can see that the original clinical studies that were done enrolled men with a minimum age of 18 years old. The package insert says, quote, the efficacy of Propecia was demonstrated in men with mild to moderate androgenetic alopecia between 18 and 41 years of age, unquote. There were actually three clinical studies cited in the package insert that included 1,879 men with androgenic alopecia. So it looks like Merck, in a fairly arbitrary move, chose the age of 18 as the minimum age to start using finasteride, and this was probably because they didn't think that there were many men younger than that back then who had androgenic alopecia, since back then usage of the internet wasn't as widespread, and therefore people who were teenagers at the time, such as myself, couldn't have easily have expressed their grievances about personal problems, especially with the lack of social media. It's also probably because testing in younger pediatric patients would require a lot more expensive and detailed clinical studies to be done, and since a minor would require their parents' permission to participate, it wouldn't have been as easy to get test subjects under the age of 18. This minimum age limit of 18 years goes beyond the initial clinical trials as well. In fact, almost all subsequent clinical studies on finasteride use have also enrolled subjects with a minimum age of 18 years old, as you can see here. 
The good news is that none of these studies, which included thousands of subjects, have identified any specific side effects that affect just younger subjects specifically, such as those aged between 18 and 21 years old. There aren't any reports of stunted growth or decreased muscle development or even lack of beard growth or stunted penile growth in men 18 years or older on finasteride in any of these clinical trials. And why would they? DHT is a trash hormone after all, so suppressing it will only do good things. But people still ask me, but Kevin, I heard DHT is still important for development in late puberty. What if I'm still undergoing puberty when I'm 18 years old? Shouldn't I still wait until I'm 21 years old just to be safe, bro? Well, first of all, unless you're on puberty blocking drugs and transmaxing, which is something Tim Pool should probably consider doing, the fact is, is that most of the time puberty is over by the time you are 18 years old. For better or for worse, over the last century, the age of the onset of puberty has gone down. This graph here shows the age of the onset of puberty for girls over time has been getting younger and younger, but it turns out that the same thing has been happening with boys too. Nowadays, puberty usually starts for boys at age 11 to 12 years old, and the average duration of puberty is about 4 years. So by age 18, puberty is over in the vast majority of men, and for this generation it's going to be over even a couple years before then. So any hope that your John Thomas is going to grow another 3 inches between the ages of 18 and age 21 is probably just wishful thinking here, chooms. If you're not satisfied with how long your dong is, then just cunnilingus, Max, bro. Anyways, let's play devil's advocate for a moment and assume you're still undergoing puberty at the age of 18. If we accept that premise, then the next question is this. Does DHT play any important role at that point? What role does DHT, dihydrotestosterone, play in puberty, and how important is this hormone? Well, that question was answered by an experiment of Mother Nature. Back in 1974, a researcher named Julianne Imperato McGinley found several families in the Dominican Republic who had a strange syndrome. They were born looking like girls, but then when they went through puberty, they developed into boys. Here is how Dr. Imperato McGinley described these males who indeed had an X and Y chromosome just like Jason Blaha. Here's what she said, quote, the affected males are born with marked ambiguity of the external genitalia and before the disorder became obvious to the community were raised as girls. At puberty, their voice deepens and they develop a typical male phenotype with a substantial increase in the muscle mass and there is no breast enlargement. The phallus enlarges to become a functional penis." Unquote. These men were found to lack the type 2 5AR isoenzyme, which just so happens to be the enzyme which finasteride also inhibits. So this population had very very, very low levels of DHT during fetal development, childhood, puberty, and adulthood. So did this lack of DHT affect their development throughout their lives? Yes, it did. But the biggest effect of a lack of DHT had on this cohort was during their fetal development before birth. While they were still gestating in their mother's wombs, there was a lack of development of the normal male sex organs. However, this all corrected during adolescence with some rare exceptions. So most of the events of puberty turned out to be testosterone driven and not DHT dependent because there is nothing DHT can do better than testosterone other than to turn you into a bald, miserable slaphead with acne and a large prostate that makes it impossible to piss. As the article says here, quote, the anabolic events at puberty in particular, the increase in muscle mass, the growth of the phallus and scrotum, and the voice change appear to be mediated by testosterone and occur in the affected males. Prostate growth, facial hair, temporal recession of the hairline, and acne do not occur and appear to be mediated by dihydrotestosterone." Unquote. So the lack of DHT during puberty has the downside of preventing beard development, but has the upside of preventing baldness, acne, and prostate enlargement. But but before you get too concerned about finasteride affecting your beard, you should realize that after puberty, once the beard is established, DHT has much less influence on beard growth. I did a video on finasteride and beard growth, in fact, that I'll link below, but the bottom line is that the research indicates that it is testosterone and not DHT that is responsible for the thickness of the beard. DHT levels may affect the rate of growth, meaning the growth can be slower, but, the, but it doesn't affect beard thickness. Anecdotally, most people on finasteride don't even notice any effect on their beard, and even male to female trans women who transition during or after puberty will still require electrolysis to remove their facial hair despite being on far more potent anti-androgens than finasteride. Anyways, 
This report by Dr. Imperato McGinley was what led to the development of finasteride as a treatment for both enlarged prostate and for male pattern hair loss. This report is also how we know that DHT is the sole culprit in the progression of hair loss in people who have androgenic alopecia, since in the Dominican Republic population of people with a genetic reduction of DHT, none of them ever had hair loss whatsoever. Not a single one. No, it wasn't because their scalps were loose or anything like that. It was because they had no DHT or virtually no DHT. You get rid of the DHT or lower it by a very substantial margin, you get rid of hair loss. It is as simple as that. These men affected with this 5-AR enzyme deficiency also had no reduction in their muscle strength after puberty. However, if you're still worried that blocking DHT will hurt your muscle strength, there are two studies that looked at men with low testosterone levels who were given testosterone replacement therapy versus testosterone replacement therapy plus a 5-AR blocker in order to lower DHT to see the effects of decreased DHT on muscle strength. In the study from 2005, both testosterone and testosterone plus finasteride improved physical performance versus placebo control, as you can see in this figure here, where the top two curves show the effects of testosterone and testosterone plus finasteride, while the bottom curve is the placebo control group. In this other randomized controlled study from 2012, it was shown that adding dutasteride to testosterone had no effect on muscle mass development in men with suppressed testosterone production, as you can see in this figure right here. In fact, there is even a South African runner named Castor Semenya who has a 5-AR type 2 deficiency, but is still, despite that, a world-class athlete. She was assigned female at birth, as you can see in her birth certificate right here, which, as we know from the Imperato Gidley article is typical of this syndrome. She somewhat controversially continues to identify as a female, which maybe gives her an advantage in her sport, though she has been disqualified from some competitions because she has high testosterone levels. With her condition, though, her DHT would be very low, which again indicates that DHT is a trash hormone and has nothing at all to do with muscle development. But what about penile development, you may wonder? Well, in the study from the Dominican Republic that I already showed you, males with a 5-AR type 2 deficiency had normal genitalia development at puberty. Before puberty, the males had sex organs that appeared to be female, or they had a very small micropenis. We're talking amazing atheist levels of small here. Boys with micropenises from 5-AR deficiency or from other causes like androgen insensitivity have been treated with topical application of DHT cream. There is a small study from Japan that looked at four boys with a 5-AR type 2 deficiency and all had a micropenis. DHT cream was applied topically pre-puberty at ages 4 to 11 years old, and it did have some effect on penile growth. However, this effect is not specifically due to DHT, since you can also achieve penile growth in children with a 5-AR deficiency through the use of oral testosterone, as was done in this study right here. Therefore, it's clear from these studies and the observations from the males with a 5-AR deficiency who have very low levels of DHT, that testosterone is the primary cause of penile growth during puberty, not DHT. So, from the looks of things and based on all the research and logic available, there is little to fear from using finasteride in males younger than 18 years old. But has there ever been any specific research done on this topic? As it turns out, the answer is yes. There actually is some limited experience with using finasteride in children and teenagers. Finasteride has been used to treat children with priapism, and it's also been used to treat a condition called hydrogenitis superative in children as well as in teenagers. Although only a few cases are described, there were apparently no side effects in any of these kids from using finasteride. So, do I think in some rare cases it might be a good idea for teenagers under the age of 18 to use finasteride besides for these rare conditions? Yes, I do, and this is based on some very convincing facts. You see, just like how puberty has been occurring earlier and earlier in both boys and girls, the age of the onset of androgenic alopecia has also gotten earlier and earlier. In fact, in this article here, androgenic alopecia was found to be the most common cause of hair loss in adolescents. The average age of diagnosis for androgenic alopecia in these teens was just 14.8 years. Most of these kids, that is 83% of them, had a very strong family history of androgenic alopecia. And some of these teens with androgenic alopecia, finasteride was tried. As the article says, quote, 
Follow-up is available for the six of nine patients treated with finasteride. All six boys reported increased hair density with no progression in hair loss. One experienced decreased sexual function that resolved despite continued finasteride use, unquote. Thus, finasteride worked without significant problems in these young men, but this was only a small number of subjects. Another article here from 2021 reviewed seven studies that looked at subjects under the age of 18 with androgenic alopecia. There were a total of 655 cases reported throughout the world, with the youngest kid being just six years old, which is downright remarkable if you ask me. Once again, there was usually a strong family history of androgenic alopecia in these subjects. Topical minoxidil was frequently used as a treatment, but some did get finasteride. Although no problems were found using finasteride in these youngsters, the authors of the study felt that there needs to be more studies done to ensure that finasteride is safe in very young patients. Remember, Chooms, we are not talking about patients aged 18 years of age or older. We are talking about kids in early teens with very aggressive androgenic alopecia, who if nothing is done for them, will be doomed to be sexless slapheads for life. This is a situation where under a doctor's supervision, finasteride use may very well be justified. Hell, their lives may very well depend on it, and I even made a couple of videos explaining how hair loss can ruin your life and it can even kill you, which I'll link below. So, the evidence certainly shows that finasteride is safe to use at the age of 18, and there really is no reason to delay starting it once you get to be 18 years old. There is no evidence to think that it will affect your development in any way whatsoever. If you're under the age of 18 and you have a strong family history of androgenic alopecia, then the safest and smartest choice you could possibly make is to start finasteride as soon as you possibly can. Unfortunately, since it hasn't been studied as extensively as in adults, oftentimes dermatologists will refuse to write a prescription for finasteride in patients who are under the age of 18. If that happens to you, please do not try to self-medicate. It isn't necessary. You could start with just topical minoxidil and also possibly consider a topical 5-AR inhibitor like alpha tradiol. These won't be as effective as finasteride, of course, but they'll likely work well enough to buy you enough time until you are old enough for a doctor to write your prescription, meaning being 18 years of age. However, there is some experience with using finasteride at ages younger than 18, so it is not out of the question at all to start it when you are under the age of 18, particularly if you have a very strong family history of premature baldness and provided you are under a doctor's supervision, of course. People start and stop puberty at different ages, but most males are done with puberty by the age of 18, and usually they're done even earlier than that. If you really want to avoid finasteride during puberty, though, your doctor can judge whether you are done with puberty, and this can help you decide if you are comfortable starting finasteride. Theoretically, you might might be done with puberty at age 16, and there would be no scientific reason not to start finasteride at that time. That would, of course, be, be, be between you and your doctor, but there is really no reason to fear starting finasteride at age 18 or even earlier than that in many cases. Whatever you do, though, always make sure you see a doctor first. No exceptions. Do not self-medicate. Regardless, please don't let anyone tell you that your path to stopping hair loss is close to you just because you are young. The scientific evidence doesn't support that claim, and baldness doesn't have to be in your future if you don't want it to be. Remember that, son. All right. So that about wraps up what I want to say about young hair loss witchers who have just undergone the trial of grasses, but I do know that I have some older hair loss witchers amongst my viewers, so don't worry, I haven't forgotten about you, Chubes. We'll be back with more content very soon. God bless.